Hey. My name's Roland Papillon. You only know me for the famous pop art work I did in the 60s uh, with uh, Andy Warhol. <laughs> I've been out of the limelight for a few years and I just really wanted to uh, approach you the uh, self funk show because I really like what you do. And uh, I just like to show you on your exhibition which opens next week. This is the, the first room. And this is really the only room I've finished because uh, I do like to work very instinctively uh, like my peers. And uh, so, you know, it's still coming together, but this is the first room. And uh, I call this piece uh, Aquafresh Colgate You Decide. And really, it's, it's about fascism in the 1920s. Um, of course, we all know what was happening in Italy at the time. I really felt that echoed with sort of 1970s Britain. I think you can, you can see, see what I'm trying to do here with the way that this is sort of, this is actually exactly three feet and seven inches from the floor, um, representing, of course, the amount of time it takes to listen to a Sex Pistols record. The 70s was a really vibrant era for me, which I think is why I stepped out of the uh, art world for a while, and I really immersed myself in the new music. Uh, the Sex Pistols, the Buzzcocks, the Sex Cocks, and things like that. And it's you know, very vibrant music, very, uh, the young people very ver fervent at that time. Very dark times as well, which is where this piece comes in. Uh, this piece is called Untitled Dark Times. Now there's four, four major component elements to this piece. Firstly, there's uh, the fireplace. This is actually original. Um, I do feel that the history of the ready made is, is very strong in this work. But also, uh, what's interesting, contrasts with that idea is um, firstly the tap, which re represents the fountain of youth ever elusive. Um, I haven't found it. <laughs> um, and then there's this. And uh, the banister here is actually made of human earwax and that took many months to make. Um, but again, not very long to install. And I've lent this up against the, uh, the gas fireplace here. And that really is a comment about the temporism of, of time, the temporal aspect of, of all the work in this room. Um, and again, of those sorts of very extreme political views which are discussed in this room. And because, although it's a be beautiful banister, if this, are, if this was to be turned on, say, so I'm, I'm allowed to do this, um, if I was to say turn, turn it on, this would very quickly melt away, so I'm just going to turn it off again. Um, but I think you can get the idea of how temporary this kind of thing is. And uh, I'll show you one last piece in this room. This is actually unfinished. You're seeing this as it happens. So, you know, very privilege. This piece is called, uh, Is There an Elephant on My Fence? I don't know, but you better get a new one. And uh, what I want you to do is, is I've wallpapered this whole room. Um, in fact, actually, this room is twice the size. And I, I put up this partition wall here, made of bricks. And um, quite unusual for such a temporary thing to use bricks, but I thought it was important. Uh, to get that idea of solidarity across. And, you know, the, the, the communist idea of solidarity with the workers. And here I started to rip some of the wallpaper away, showing the, uh, the sordid underbelly of George Orwell's work and his comment on communism. And you notice know, these holes kind of look like eyes. And um, it's really the old, also eye of Big Brother. And how I do this is very simple, and this is going to be part, this is the other part of the work. And this represents uh, the female reproductive order, um, and, and Mother Russia for that reason. And uh, if you see it from the other side, actually, you can see a lot clearly how that resembles the vagina. Um, it's kind of all the bastards understand. <laughs> So let's go, on, let's go on to the next room. <laughs> I'll bring this with me. So now we're in the, uh, hello again. 
We're in the 80s part of the house. Um, we've just come through the circle. <laughs> We just come through the seventies area, um, and the, again, this is kind of a the eighties. And as you can see, we're in a hallway. If you just like to pan around, we're in a hallway. Um, that's because I felt the eighties was a very transitional time, very much for um, Britain as a whole, but also me personally. Um, it's when I divorced my first wife and uh, married my second, her sister. Um, it was a very transitional time for me. Um, so this is the first work. Again, this part of the house has not been worked on yet. Um, I really wish it could have given me more notice. Uh, here, here's where well, the second piece will be. Um, as you can see at the moment, it's it's just a cupboard. Um, and what, what, what's going to be in here is, is actually a model of myself. And um, this really, again, this is the time where there was a lot of riots in Britain. Uh, as, as as many may remember, or perhaps your fathers may have told you, uh, if they were minors. And now, this also talks about my frustration with uh, being locked into the marriage of my first wife. Essentially, because at that time I had no money, and couldn't divorce her really, because I would have been broken and may have died. So, I had to stay with her until I found someone else rich. And um, so, in here will be a model of myself going, Ah! And looking scared, and um, it's really talking about how I felt, and also the the fear of um, Thatcher's government uh, that instilled in many of us. And also, obviously, that harks back to some of the themes in the first room. Uh, so again, moving through the eighties hallway. Eighties is also included uh, up here. Now, there was, there was a thing going on with fans, the New Wave fans at the time. Now, they uh, very much, uh, I'm talking about your Duran Durans, your Erasures, and, but also also the, the, the true New Wave bands, uh, your Curers and things like that. Um, and they very much had this idea of hope of things to come and that actually you know there is there is there's wealth in the world there's there's gold um that's all this room is about and as you, you had to come up the stairs and it's like being brought into a new world um very light and airy don't, don't put it on your program that room is shit i'm not doing it come on let's move on Let's move on to this room. Are you okay? Yeah, no trip I'm there. fine. Okay, this is this room is uh, now this room is really good. Uh, this is where I'm actually going to put um, the circus du oblique, uh, as I as I like to call it. Um, but I'm going to take rotting animals. I'm going to put them in piles in the corner. But one here. This, this one's going to be. I'd like this one to be pigeons and seagulls. And here, what I'd like is kind of. And again, another pile of dead animals. And what I'd want is like a ram, sort of, sort of like that. Um, but he's he's got an eye missing, and so there's a mouse in it, sort of, sort of like that, with its tail hanging out. And uh, and then the, and then there's going to be a pile of rats again. And then uh, behind the rats, you can just start to see the head. Again, another statue of me going ah. And, uh, well, I think we all know what that's about. Come on. Now, this is very exciting. Um, this is actually a stairwell. And this isn't about a specific time. But if it was about a specific time, it would be about the 